Hello everyone, back to tuning in to today's fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days. For today's final video, day 10 is going to take us to the 12th of uh, July. And we'll be able to extend that beyond that with the excellent GFS and ECM ensembles because they are running to around a couple of weeks. So I'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the year, next four weeks. Gets us to the final stages of July. And I shall get on with that for you in a moment, just to say, it's been a busy day, guys, where so far today, we started off with the uh, 6 a.m. upload uh, forecast, we've had the uh, ECMWF 42 days, slash 6 weeks look ahead, and if that wasn't enough, a weekend forecast as well, so please check out all today's videos, if you'd like to do that, please like, share, subscribe, on this, thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that, right, okay, we'll start off with today's final video, then, we're going to begin having a look at what's going on in the tropical Atlantic Ocean. Uh, now, all of a sudden, we've got two tropical storms that have appeared. One I was expecting, and one I was not. So, we've got a yellow X just here. Let's deal with that one first of all. That's a disturbance one, which is a 10% chance of site confirmation in the next uh, in the next two and five days. We've also now got tropical storm Bonnie just here. Now, we're keeping an eye on that. Uh, yesterday, and we, you know, been keeping an eye on that for a few days. So, he's expecting that one to uh, pop up. And indeed, it has. So, uh, Bonnie currently, Tropical Storm Bonnie, is just off the coast of Puerto Rico at the moment. Going to move out into the uh, Pacific Ocean as a Tropical Storm and should become a hurricane, or predicted to become a hurricane, in the uh, Pacific Ocean off the coast of Mexico sometime. Uh, early to middle of next week. So that is all on track, going as expected. And then we've also got Tropical Storm Colin, which has suddenly uh, appeared down there uh, across the southeastern part of America. Again, maximum sustained winds of 40 miles per hour with a minimum set pressure of 1,012 millibars. Clicking on Colin, we can see that this is forecast to remain as a tropical storm moving from South Carolina up the Carolina coast to North Carolina and then Virginia, so very much hugging the coast uh, this weekend, uh, before moving out into the Atlantic uh, off the coast of uh, Virginia as we get through into the early part of next week. As soon as a tropical storm then, what happens after that? You know, uh, it's, not, it's not clear. I assume it's going to die a death somewhere around here because... Um, I mean, it's going to carry on as a tropical storm going in that direction. You you would expect, you know, that, that the forecast would go further than that. It stops at uh, 2 a.m. on Monday, as we've already seen from Bonnie. Uh, actually, the projections can go out to the middle uh, middle part of next week. So I would assume that sometime around Monday, it just sort of dies to death. Uh, but maybe it might go post-tropical. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with Colin, actually. Um, once we get to Monday, but it's a rather unexpected uh, development. There was no sign of that uh, being predicted by uh, National Hurricane Centre yesterday, which is yesterday's video. So I was a little bit surprised to see that all of a sudden there was a tropical storm <laughs> over South Carolina when I woke up uh, this morning. But maybe I uh, maybe I missed something. Anyway, active, active, active. It's very early. It's only the second of July. And uh, we've got two tropical storms going on already. One that's going to become a hurricane in the Pacific. And um, remember, we aren't going to reach peak hurricane season until September, October. So, um, yeah, you know, I think we're going to have another big season again uh, this year. It's uh, looking that way at the moment. Just to tell you about CT is uh, not in yet for June. We're still waiting for the finalised number. Um, so the last update was 26th of June at Hadley. Uh, then we're at 14.9, which is 0.8 of a degree above average. So we're waiting to see where the CET uh, comes in and also to get an update for July. I know a lot of you uh, enjoy CET Saturday. Um, I haven't done that for quite a long while. I am hoping to do that next Saturday. When we get June's finalised number and some data in for July, um, then we will do a CET Saturday and we'll have a look at July data. You know, from century and temperature, we'll look at the uh, hottest and, and, and uh, coolest Julys back through the uh, decades and centuries and whatnot. So not a lot of you like that. I don't like doing CT Saturday. I've not done one for a while. I wanted to do one today, but because we've not got any July data yet, uh, and we don't have June's finalised number, I think we'll leave it until next week. But uh, hopefully we'll be able to get that done for you next week. We'll do a CT Saturday next week. Right, these are the GFS upper air temperature and temptation ensemble. Next couple of weeks, we'll look rugby today. So, red line 
is of a 30-year upper air temperature average for uh, rugby. We're starting off the below average for his upper air temperature at the moment. Later next week, for around middle of the commas, upper air temperatures are going to lift up, becoming warmer. As we go through the second week of July into the middle part of the month, actually becoming quite hot with some of these outlier members just here. Still uh, popping up down 20 degrees to 8 to 50 HPA. Probably not going to get that hot, but certainly looks like there's a warming trend through the second week of July and up to the middle part of the month. Precipitation wise, rather showery at the moment for the next couple of days, then going drier through much of next week. Precipitation then comes back around the middle part of July and it looks like it's going to turn increasingly uh, showery. And if we do get this push up in the temperature around the middle part of July, of course, some of these uh, precipitation spikes could well be telling us that thunder is in the offing. So maybe in mid July, turns hot and thundery. We'll have to wait and see about that. Temperature anomalies from the 1st to the 9th of July are going to be around to a little bit below average on particularly big deviation. Temptation anomalies from the 1st to 9th of July more or less dry than average in most areas. The latest wind from that from earthnoldschool.net shows that pulling in wind from off the Atlantic today for chopper flow pressure in showery conditions. This hour, the latest UK Met Euro run is uh, looking. So, uh, this is going to be on Tuesday. High pressure begins to reach in from off the Atlantic. And that high pressure reaching in will be the trend through next week, gradually turning drier and warmer as the week progresses. If you want to know more about that, check out the weekend forecast. Icon looks like that again. Look at that high pressure reaching in from off the Atlantic, becoming stronger. As the week uh, progresses, so turning mainly dry, fine, warm, potentially very warm by the end of next week. Maybe looking hot down in the south. I think 30 degrees is distinctly possible for like uh, some southern areas and southeastern areas by next weekend. Jeff has midnight run again with high pressure ridging in from off the Atlantic through next week, increasingly taking over the weather pattern, bringing loads of dry. Warm, very warm weather. Around day 10, the high pressure just begins to pull out to our west a little bit, allows something a bit cooler, perhaps slightly more showery, uh, with uh, north north easy throw. Start coming in around the top of the high pressure, particularly affecting eastern areas. Um, then the high pressure originally Scandinavia, pulling in more of a north east wind. That's probably bringing a bit of thunder or something into far southeast there around the 13th of July. Certainly no hot southern is. Um, with the Midnight GFS run, but still pretty warm, still large anti-cyclone right up to the very end. We get to the 18th of July today, the Midnight GFS run, and still that high pressure bridges in from off the Atlantic, bringing mostly dry and warm or very warm weather. Uh, GFS 6 there, again, looking like that, so the trend next week is to high pressure. Takes a while, but eventually that high pressure will get in. We'll be sitting over the country by the end of next week. Next week, can bring lots of dry Warm, very warm, or maybe for the south, locally hot weather. And that high pressure continues to dominate weather up towards day 10 uh, in the south. Anyway, very warm to hot there by 12th of July. Further north, a little bit more unsettled on this GFS run. Turns a, turns a bit more westerly with some outbreaks of rain perhaps coming in to parts of Scotland. Uh, then turn wind into the north temporarily around 13th of July before high pressure again starts pushing through the country. And we are very, very close to heat. So there's some real heat there. By the 15th of July, mid month, we've got plus 20 Celsius ice firm flirting with southern parts of England. Uh, it all turns rather thundery, though. It's all very uh, excessive rain stuff, you know, so don't, uh, you know, don't take this too seriously. But this GFS run sort of pulls up some heat very close to us. And the, the upshot of that is about to, to develop like a thundery low that brings like risk of thunderstorms around the middle part of July. Before then, we start introducing like a west south westerly type type thing. Um, so, you know, it's very uncertain what's going to happen around this middle part of July period. There's still a hint there, but we might pull up some appreciable levels of heat from France. If we do, though, watch out for, for thunder. Uh, GM, and if you enjoyed the video, by the way, please smash the like button, make sure to channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And drop a comment. I'll let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much to all of you for doing that. Right, GM, again. High pressure ridging in through next week. That's the trend, high and dry, as that high pressure builds up from the Azores through the week and into next weekend, bringing lots of dry, warm, very warm weather with it. Up to day 10, still under the influence of high pressure, mainly dry, potentially very warm, couldn't be locally hot down the south. Um, maybe just a hint of something a little bit more unsettled coming in towards Scotland. And then the East GFWF 
Also, uh, much of a much this through next week. Good agreement, cross the model, good cross the model agreement with high pressure to build in from the source. Same weather, mostly dry, increasing amounts of sunshine, increasing warmth through next week under that big ridge of high pressure. But it's just set to dominate, right, with J10, if the ECM WF is, uh, is correct. So an extended spell, a prolonged spell of uh, mostly dry and, and potentially, you know, warm or very warm weather. This is a precipitation forecast based on that. So each uh, run currently quite showery. That carries on through tomorrow into the open next week. But gradually those showers begin to fade out as the week goes on. It takes a while, but as high pressure builds in, the rain gets pushed off to the far north. Of northwest most areas turn dry uh, between days five and ten. These are the options on the table in the ECM on some day four, day ten. Get September 12th, the dry from ECMWF.int themselves. Still no update from the Iceland Met Office with the cluster scenarios. So um 18 members of the ECM ensembles have a ridge of high pressure through the country and extending north as well, lots of dry. Pretty warm weather with that, of course. Uh, we've got 17 just here that have high pressure through the country. So just a little bit further north. That's still mainly dry and quite warm, but could be putting in something slightly cooler from the north or northeast. And uh, then we've got 16 down here. High pressure just a little bit out towards our west. Again, top low pressure over Scandinavia. And just putting in something a little bit cooler, perhaps, from, from the north or the northeast with that one. So it's not the exact position of the high pressure that's critical, but the majority option just is uh, actually this one with high pressure right over top of the country. But even if high pressure just pulls a little bit to our west, there will still be a lot of dry and pretty warm weather on offer, I would have thought. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. This gets us to the 17th of July. 21 members of the East Young Ensembles then have the Atlantic breaking through as high pressure goes south. So that's turning into more of a probably showery Atlantic type flow. Uh, then we've got 14 just here. With high pressure again over France, low pressure way to our northwest. That's referred to a bit more of an Atlantic type flow as well, particularly turning unsettled perhaps in the north. We have eight just here that look hot. Uh, so this has high pressure over just slightly to the east of the coach up pull up hot, maybe very hot air from the south, possible with that. That'd be like a mid July heat wave type thing, I would have thought. And then uh, we've got uh, another eight just here with high pressure to our east and low pressure out to west. That could be volatile, that we bring up a lot of warmth from the south. Um, but of course, with the low pressure out to the west, that could trigger further storms and, and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of options on the table. I think the high pressure is going to be involved. You know, uh, the exact position will be critical. If it goes west, it'll turn cooler. If it goes east, It'll turn hotter. If it sticks over the country, it will remain dry and very warm. CMS meets you finally. We survive 500 middle bar high time to bring down to meet beers. The first week beer takes us from the 2nd through to the 8th of July, becoming weak. Has high pressure dominated weather. More as over the country, should be not so dry. Warm weather with that. Week 2 also dominated by high pressure. Tonight to the 15th of July. Big ridge sitting over the country again. Mostly dry and uh, very warm with that. Week 3, look at this, no change, 16th to 22nd of July. High pressure right in over top of the country. This will be a very warm and dry July, if this is right. Week 4 is the 23rd to 29th of July, still with high pressure dominating. Maybe going a little bit further north, but still in control of the weather. We're still bringing very warm, maybe hot air from the east or the southeast. It'll be a very warm and dry July, if that's CFS we to run. Is correct. So maybe a classic summer month coming up. We'll have to wait and see. Wow, wow, wow. Right, if you enjoyed the video, please do you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gas Lovers and get them to subscribe as well. We are grinding to 14k subscribers. If everybody who subscribes means a friend, we will get to 14k so much more quickly. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Right, we're done with today's videos then. So just to come out tomorrow. Very exciting day tomorrow. So we're going to start off with 6 a.m. upload. There will be some sort of 10 to 14 day as well. But, 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 the main point is that 8 p.m. tomorrow evening, we are going to premiere the winter 2022-2023 NAO forecast. Channel members have already had advanced previews of that. 
and uh, you know, I think feedback is looking quite interesting. Um, I'll say no more. But uh, everybody will get to see that tomorrow at 8 p.m. And it's going to be exciting. It'll be a very, very exciting uh, premiere and video and update and whatnot. Um, so I shall see you on the red carpet. Get your get your tuxedos and glad rags ready. Uh, I shall see you on the red carpet uh, tomorrow, uh, just before 8 p.m. Uh, and I'll, I'll be in the live chat with you all and we'll watch it together. And uh, it's going to be great. So that's coming up tomorrow at 8 p.m. Yeah, enjoy the rest of your Saturday, though. And for today's video, it's a busy year. That's all for now. And thanks for watching.